All right, so it is Cork against Waterford in the final of the Allianz National Hurling League Saturday evening, 7.15 throw-in in Thurles to look ahead of it and um, particularly to focus on what's been happening in Cork this season. I'm joined by their former manager, John Myler. Evening, John. Evening, Nathan. You keep well? Excellent. Beautiful and sunny here in Cork this evening, so looking forward now to Saturday night. Uh, hard to believe... 1998, the last time Cork won a National Hurling League title. 24 years, 17 years since any national title of any sort. Uh, is this the weekend where it all changes? I think so, yeah, but it's going to be a hugely competitive game on Saturday evening. Um, I think uh, both teams have been the form teams of the uh, league so far. Um, I think Cork have done really well. Um, they've shown a good strength, good depth in the panel and um, you know, they, they, they've done really, really well. They've shown a consistency in their performance. Uh, bar the, the one league game away to Wexford, uh, where Rory O'Connor was outstanding that day for Wexford. And then the same with, with Waterford. Waterford have been really good and and uh, in the league. And, you know, last um, Sunday against Wexford, the Nolan Park was way too easy for them. And, uh, you know, Liam Cal will expect a, a stronger game from Cork than what Wexford gave last Sunday. But, you know, Waterford looked very good uh, last Sunday. Mm. For a few of the players in the Cork squad, it'll be their, their first experience of a national final and all the excitement that goes with that. But it's been interesting reading some of the articles and listening to some of the former Cork players talking about the more experienced players in the squad and, and a concern about the scar tissue that might be building of losses in major finals from the two All-Irelands in 20 and 13, the couple of league finals in 2012 and 2015, and, and a need for those players to win a national title. I, I, is that your sense that like, that's a lot of big games to have lost for some of these guys? Yeah, I, I, look, it, it is like, but, uh, you know, you get to All-Ireland finals, league finals, and you have to win them. And, and uh, you have history there before of not winning games. And I think... You know that this is a fantastic opportunity. You know, for the younger players like like um, Coleman now and Fitzgibbon, um, really to put their mark on Cork hurling and to really set a platform. And then you have the younger fellas coming with them, Connolly and and Barris and Joyce and those as well. So, um, like they need to step up to the plate. And I think Coleman and Fitzy, Fitzy showed real leadership qualities last Saturday night. So, you know, it's 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 new to them. Um, and they've won a couple of Munster Championships in the last few years, in 17 and 18. So they have experience of, of you know, big games, Munster finals, but just haven't pushed on that there. And it'd be great for Hoggy to win a league medal on Sunday and to go on then in two weeks' time against Limerick in the Championship. When you think back to last September and the hammering that Limerick handed out in the All-Ireland final, it, like it's such a difficult long winter to come back and prep for a league campaign and like Cork absolutely flew out of the blocks in the league when you dig deep into the actual performances and the level players are getting to where are they compared to last September as much as you can compare from championship onto league I think, look I think they've exercised the last year's All-Ireland final of that and you could see Obviously, they would have had done a review of the All Ireland series last year and 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 put the focus on starting uh, way back in January. Put the focus on getting up fitness. Get you know, and because we've a different championship this year, and uh, we've only two weeks between the league final and the championship, you know, form is going to be hugely important because that takes you in to the Limerick game in two weeks' time. And Cork will have had the benefit. Um, of the game last Sunday, they have the benefit of of the game next Sunday. So they're going into the Limerick match hugely on a huge high. So you'll need a good performance now against um, Waterford on Sunday in in um, in um, in Turles. and that's hugely important. And I think it'll set them up great for for the Limerick match. And there's no like all Ireland scars always stay there, Nate. You'll never exercise those. You know, you, you remember. But do they come back to the surface if? If in a game like on Saturday night you end up losing that but, match, but that that's might... where you lead. That's where you need the leadership. Then, and I, that that's where Coleman and Fitzy have to stand up. Um, I think they're young enough now. They're you know they're there since seventeen, so they've had five years of Munster Championship All Ireland final. They, they've had experience of all of that, and now is their time. Like what Jimmy Jimmy Barry had earlier on. Um, going back a few years ago, young players, exciting players, mobile players, talented players. You know who are good hurlers, athletic. Like Fitzy was outstanding last last um, Saturday night against Kilkenny in the park. That goal, like, was you know typified his performance. 
And, you know, he was quiet enough last year, but, you know, the, the, himself and Coleman have really burst on the scene in, that, in the last few years. And now it's their turn to stand up. And it's a new era. Patrick Collins in the goal. All of those players, Tim O'Mahony, Robert Downey, they need to put a, a, their own stamp on the game, their own stamp on Cork Curling and build now for the next few years. Fitzgibbon and Coleman were like they were brilliant when you were there in, in 2018 and all stars and young hurlers of the year. When you talk about them, this being their moment, like, that's four years on now. How have they developed and, and what's gone on over the intervening three years that, that it still isn't their team? <laughs> because there are other teams that just saw the emergence of a, of a fantastic Limerick team. That's what happened there, Nathan, really, in a nutshell. Like Limerick came out of the blocks in in, um, in 17 and, and 18, and you know, and they've driven on. And Limerick are not going to let anybody open the door and get in at them. So, you know, that that like Coleman and Fitzy and those, they've had huge pressure on them because of such a fantastic team in Limerick and who are very you know, concentrated on going for three in a row, very concerned about, you know, putting writing their names in history. And a lot of those Limerick fellas, Kyle Hayes, Keen Lynch, they're just glad they're the same age as Fitzy and and and, and Coleman. So they, they, they've parallel stories, except the Limerick fellas three all Ireland medals, and that's the difference. So, you know, that that now is the time for these guys to stand up really. It feels like Patrick Horgan has been sort of carrying Cork in his shoulders at times over the last decade. When you talk about that leadership and and those two players' personality, does carrying Cork on their shoulders does that does that sit easily with them? Do you think? No, but you can share that, Nate, and you can share that because you know Hoggy and 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 Seamus and those that are on the wrong side, the thirty and that, and you know what I mean. Both of them, like Seamus, came on the other day. Hoggy was taken off, but then you're you're freshening it up, and you know. Kingston is seeing how the game is going and bring in flesh, fresh legs. So it's hugely important now to have 20 players at the moment and to bring in good substitutions off the bench and to bring them in critically at the right time. And 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 that's important. So it's spread between the old fellas and the young fellas. So if you parallel Limerick like that, that you have Declan Hannon and those like they're 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 hold, they're the glue that holds the team together and and you know keep the young fellas going and that. So look, it's it's it makes sort of fascinating game on Saturday night. In terms of not being as reliant on just one or two players, the decision to take off Shane Kingston and Patrick Horgan with what about twenty minutes of the game still remaining on Saturday night, how much of that did you think from Kieran Kingston was just on actual performances and what he needed over the final twenty minutes and how much well, the, was maybe first, setting out a bit of a marker? Minutes, the first twenty minutes of the second half there's no ball that went into Hoggy. Um you know what I mean? And and when you have the mobility of the half back line of of, of Coleman and that and, and Fitzgibbon in midfield and Barrett as well, like they're going to be shooting from 40, 50 yards out. So the ball is not really going into Hoggy there. And I felt sorry for him in a way in you know at the start of the second half and he wasn't getting the ball. The ball wasn't coming into him. Um so you know what I mean? That that that's that's an issue. Um but you know, um I think that uh, that's the way Waterford will set up again on on um, on on Saturday evening, like they'll put pressure on the Cork midfield around that area, and they won't let Coleman and Fitzgibbon get on the ball. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that sets up. Uh, Connor Lehan's return has been interesting. He was on the show with us before Christmas, and there was no great sense that he was about to return. He'd gone off. He'd won a county title. Uh, He's been the next big thing in Cork for probably over a decade at this stage. What sort of influence has he had since his return? He's a, he's had a massive influence, but but the important thing about Connor is that Connor has had a break, Nate. You know what I mean? That he was he was gone since he was a young fella, 17, 18, and you know, they were expected to win in All Ireland there against Clare in 13. And you know, there was a lot of pressure put on his shoulders at a young age. And, and he's took last year off or he was left out of the panel last year. So he's refreshed, he's come back. You know, Ben O'Connor um, went in there. They won a county with Middleton, and so he's fresh, and he didn't have the pressure of the intercounty last year. So now he's in there. He's enjoying his hurling more, and you can see that with some of his hurling last 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 weekend. Excellent, and it's great to see Lahan back. And you know, he's on the same wavelength as Fitzy and those and and and, and Coleman. So you're going to see a high speed, high tempo game on on Saturday night. To go back to the All-Ireland, and I know Cork people are probably very keen to move on, but, you know, it is 
such a pivotal point in, in trying to figure out where they are even this season and closing a gap to Limerick. Where do you think Kieran Kingston was looking at? You, you talk about fitness there and form and starting quickly because the championship is just going to fly by and we'll be at the end of July before we know it. In terms of tactics, in terms of style, have you seen a shift from Cork that they're trying to do something different to close that gap in Limerick? It's, it's a more mobile, more athletic, high-speed game and because they're the players that you have. You don't have the kind of the big physical players like Limerick and that. Um, so the game that Cork are going to play is they're going to play a mobile, uh, f- f- you know, a mobile, fast, move the ball, 30-yard passes. That's really it. So I would expect Waterford then to clutter up the midfield, to put the pressure on there, to put the pressure on source. Um, and, and again, then, the, but the huge thing of Cork is that, you know, Darrell Leary, Shane Barrett, Aaron Connolly, they've come in and if Connolly was excellent last Saturday. So that's, you know, he got three points and that has taken, you know, pressure off Hoggy and those as well. So like before you were expecting Hoggy more to do the scores. But Connolly matured last Saturday. I thought he was excellent against Kilkenny. So that's a plus. Barrett is coming into his game. So they're mobile, they're athletic players. O'Leary was caught in the was caught in the first half for, for, for a couple of goals from Kilkenny. So th- 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 that problem is still there. That full back line issue problem is still there. So I would expect Sean O'Donoghue to come in on, on on Saturday against Waterford and come in there in the full back line. But it's it's an athletic high speed, high tempo, but Waterford will be playing much the same type of game as well. You expect Waterford will be targeting that weakness at full back then? Well, they targeted Wexford. Like, the Wexford full back line was wide open. I don't, I don't know, you know, I mean, the Wexford full back line was wide open last weekend. And, you know, I suppose in in, in one sense that, like, um, Sean Murphy was always the sweeper there, you know, when the previous manager was there. And that probably prevented uh, those things happening. But, like, Waterford opened Wexford up last week. And it was interesting to see how they played. They, they kept the ball and then they moved the ball to the player in the best position. So... I think that Cal will be looking at the Cork full back line and trying to expose them and trying to get in behind them and to go for goals. So it'll be fascinating from that perspective. Cork do look incredibly fit. Like watching them in that second half against Kilkenny, it just felt as though they wore them down, that there was there was still more in the tank. Yeah, well, the last... I think Cork won that game really in, in the last 10, 15 minutes and they showed, you know, greater legs. So th- that would indicate that they were fitter, to, you know what I mean? Going into the, uh, going into that match against Kilkenny, that, that last 10 minutes, that was absolutely crucial to, where the game was on a kind of a knife edge and, and Cork powered into the game. So that would suggest that, you know what I mean? That the, the, their, their fitness levels are good and, you'll expect more the same now on on, on, on Saturday in Turles. And then you're going two weeks into the Limerick game. So again, you know what I mean? You're just only topping up the, the fitness levels of the running and that and the, the hurling will sharpen up now on Saturday night as well. Would you get a sense, John, from, from talking to people around the game that there is a big difference and has been over the past month in, in terms of fitness levels and where different counties want to be where a Cork wanting to banish what happened last year need to come quickly out of the block need to build momentum whereas everyone's assuming Limerick are thinking about late May, June that that's when they want to be at the peak of their fitness I don't know if you've been talking to anyone about what's going on in the S&C side of things with the different teams No but you know Limerick spent four days down in the Centre of Excellence in Farn 4 a few weeks ago so they are you know what I mean they will be working on their fitness there's nothing being said about Clare and Tipperary because they're, you know what I mean, they're, they, they haven't been involved in that. So they'll be worried about their game when, you know, Tipperary playing Waterford and Limerick playing Cork in the first game. So Clare then will be going into the next round, the second round of the Munster Championship with no game. And, you know what I mean? So, look, it's 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 about momentum, Nathan. And, you know what I mean, this is ideal for this Cork team, I think, to have played Kilkenny, to be playing Waterford, two really good matches before they go out against Limerick. And I'd say there'll be skin and hair flying in two weeks' time against Limerick. Um, it'll, it'll be unbelievable game, I think. Um, Cork will want to exercise the all Ireland final. Limerick will want to put a mark down. So I'd say you won't be able to get into Parky Kiev. There'll be, there'll be 100,000 outside Parky Kiev, oh, mind inside. Great that, so, uh, um, great that Ed Sheeran's actually taking a break to allow them to play some sport at Parky Kiev, isn't it? Well, what? 
<laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear Ed you. Sheeran. Ed Sheeran, he's allowed them play an actual match at uh, Porky Cueve this summer. Must be the oh, only one. Look, that's, look, look, Nathan, there, there are financial constraints on every county board. County boards have to make money, Nathan. County boards, the expense now of running into county teams is incredible. You you look at the, the financial figures every year. So the GA need people like Ed Sheeran. The GA need people like... Uh, Bruce Springsteen, all these people to run cons. You have to have those people, Nathan, to generate income. And and you know we've had two years of COVID where we've had no um, money going into the Munster Council, the All Ireland, or into Crow Park and that. So we need Ed Sheeran, and Ed Sheeran needs the GA. You know what I mean? So they're they're hugely important, Nathan, to pay bills uh, because running an inter-county team that was any county treasurer would tell you is not is no fun. Yeah. There's a line you never thought you'd be saying. Hey, no, but, but there's huge expense, Nathan. Like, you know what I mean? You look at back rooms now, and you could have 40 people in the back room. Um, it, it, it's incredible. And, you know, going back to when I played, you know, a few years back, and you probably had 10 or 15. Now you could have 30, 40 people there. And everybody has a vital role, a vital function. And players want this, players want that, players want the other thing. And the cost of things, and the cost of gyms and the cost of gear and equipment and travel, you know, that, that there's huge financial constraints on the GA. And we need Ed Sheeran and um, Bruce Springsteen and all these people. Is there much chat about around Cork with what's happening with the footballers? It seems there's an important meeting this evening. We're in a sort of Newbridge or nowhere scenario where ah, the footballers don't want to go to Fitzgerald Stadium. It's Porky Rain, understandably. Stadium. Look, Fitzgerald Stadium is a fantastic arena to play football. And Ed Sheeran is in Parky Keeve, as I said to you, to raise finances for Cork GA. And, and, and that's good. It's just the scheduling was wrong and somebody didn't look at the schedule or didn't look at when Ed Sheeran was available and see what the Munster chapter. And that fixture should have been put into Killarney day one because, you know, a Parky ring only holds... 15,000 and you know there'll be 30,000 people in in Fitzgerald Stadium. If you do your maths if you do your maths uh, Nathan that's probably half a million extra revenue generated and that money Nathan goes out to a lot of clubs in, in Kerry and Cork and Tipperary and Waterford for the further development of their own clubs in terms of facilities and all of those and a lot of clubs depend on grants from Munster Council and it, it has to be done. That's the logic. It's a uh, easy to look at it from the outside and you know make the arguments that you do if you were the Cork football manager would you be saying we're not leaving Porky Rain you look at the quality that Kerry side you look where Cork are at the moment tight stadium 11,000 people you have far more chance of getting a result there than you do down in Killarney I, I'll tell you a story Nathan I was often involved with CIT years ago playing Fitzgibbon hurling and we would often you know be drawn against UCC in the Fitzgibbon Cup I always wanted to play in the Mardock. I always wanted to play in the Mardock. And we played them. We concede home advantage. And you might have 3,000 people. You might have 3,000 people down in the Mardock for CIT and UCC in the Fitzgibbon Cup game. Um, and we lost a lot of them, but we won one or two of them. But now with the facilities that, that MTU, it's now Munster Technological University, we have fantastic facilities. And, you know... Cork people love a weekend in Turles. Cork people love a weekend in Killarney. And I love Killarney. And I think it's fantastic, Nathan, to be down there. And that's where the game should have been scheduled originally if they knew that Ed Sheeran was coming to Parky Keeve. And, and it's, it's, it was just a scheduling mismatch. There's no point having meetings or we won't go here, we won't go there. At the end of the day, you need to concentrate on what your job is, what your function is. And that's, I would be, I would be going to Killarney. I would have no problem. You know. We've got to the root of it. You like your night out in Killarney? No, it's a fantastic place, Nathan, in the summer. Killarney is brilliant. You know what I mean? Turles on a Saturday evening. God, I've had some great nights in, in um, some Saturday evenings in, in Turles and in Killarney. It's a fantastic place. It's a fantastic place for a weekend. And the hospitality of the Killarney people, uh, the pubs, the hotels, the same in Turles. They love you know, putting on a good show there for Cork people, for Kerry people, it's brilliant. And I love going up to Turles. Go up to Turles Saturday evening and, um, you know, there'd be a bit of slagging going on with Waterford people, with Tipperary people, etc., uh, in the pubs and in the hotels and that. So, you know, it's great. Fantastic. 
Uh, to go back to the hurling then, I'm interested in how excited and how much you believe it'll be beneficial for Cork and Waterford to play a game of this magnitude two weeks out from the start of the Munster Championship and the momentum that yep. it can give you. W- with your coach's hat on, would any part of you be thinking, well, I don't want everybody going at 110% here a f- you know, fortnight out from a rerun of the All Ireland final that you're, you know, you're, again, you're thinking of taking players off 15 minutes from the end. There's, there's worries about injuries. Nate, Nate, there's, there's a league title up there. There's a cup up there. We need to go and win it, and I think we'll give 100 percent, and that's it. And then, you know, we'll we'll sit down on Monday morning and we and we'll talk about it. We'll discuss it, and we'll see where we are then to play Limerick in two weeks' time. The same with Waterford. They're playing Tip uh, in Walsh Park in two weeks' time. Tipperary have been, you know, they haven't had a match. They'll be having matches inside and training. Same with Limerick. So they won't really know how they're going in terms of, you know, you can have training matches inside in 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 your own um in in Limerick or in Tipperary, but you really don't know uh, how you're going. Cork saw last week there that their fitness levels were good in the last 10 minutes. Uh Waterford probably didn't see as much as what you know, Liam Cal wanted to see, and then Austin was sent off, which didn't really help either. But I think, you know, that that Cork playing Waterford in a few weeks' time, um, I think Waterford probably not appealing the red card surprised me, uh, because they probably don't want to show the full hand with Austin. But um, you know, it'll be fantastic preparation for the Munster Championship in two weeks' time. Because nobody, Nathan, will remember winning the league in 2022 if you don't qualify in the three going into the All Ireland quarter final. Yeah, I'm Waterford that... then. I'm Waterford mm-hmm. then, John. You mentioned uh, Ozzy Gleeson and the decision not to appeal that you were a little bit surprised. And listen, it was a, a stupid thing Amazed. he did. It was also a, a tame yeah. enough thing he did. Uh, yeah. What? Why do you think they they didn't appeal? Considering it is a national title. I just I, I I don't know. I've looked at it a few times and. You know, the Wexford player goes down, but he gets up basically, you know, 20, 30 seconds. He's not really rolling around. And I don't think Austin didn't do anything serious to him or anything like that. So he was just petulance and didn't need it. Um, do you think there'd be any part I, of Liam Cahill teaching him a lesson that he, nah, that he needs to miss out no, on this game? There's, there's no... Austin is a fantastic hurler, brilliant hurler. You're not teaching a guy like him a lesson and, and, and that and... But you, you put it up to the other players, then the other fifteen that will go out now on, on on Saturday against Cork. Can we do without Austin? You know, and and we'll win it for Austin. That kind of mentality, that kind of syndrome, really. You know what I mean? So somebody is going to get an opportunity on Saturday night instead of, of Austin Gleeson, and Cal is going to say to him, "Look, if you play well, you'll be in the team in two weeks' time against Tip." So, you know, it's 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 not you. Do those things in my time, Nathan, but not not now, like you know, um, because Waterford really needed Austin. I think you know, uh, they've built up quite a bit of depth in that squad as well over the league. Yeah, but Cal is a good manager. He's in year three um, down there. He has to he has to produce something this year. He has to produce the cup. They've won leagues before, but he has to produce an All Ireland team. That's that's the bottom line of the eight or nine intercounty managers that are there. You have to produce the goods now. This is his this is his third year. Um, his contract was up there uh, this year, and he said he'd stay on with with Waterford. He wouldn't go when the tip job was available. So he has to perform. He has to produce goods this year for Waterford. If not, the question marks come then. That's that's the issue. That's the problem. Give us your prediction then for Saturday evening, John. I think Cork. Um, I think Cork will shade it. Um, I think they will because of Gleeson. I think that's the main reason. Um, you know, but it's it's going to be a fantastic occasion, full house in Turles on the Saturday evening. You know, setting into two weeks in the championship against Limerick and Tipperary for both teams. So I think Cork by a few points. Great stuff, John. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, John Myler there ahead of Saturday's Allianz Hurling League final.